good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome. We have, uh, we have a, a big announcement today. Uh, we're really pleased to um, be joined with, by a number of folks who've been uh, active and working on the city's housing problems uh, for uh, a while uh, now. And um, uh, in that work, has yielded a 22-point uh, plan that, uh, although we cannot say it will solve every last housing issue in the city, we believe that it represents a fulsome effort uh, to deal uh, at the local level with uh, what we are experiencing in common with uh, much of the rest of urban America. Um, so it is a national problem that is uh, housing um, uh, insecurity, housing, the housing crunch. Uh, and it's been happening for lots of reasons over the last several years. Uh, and it runs the gamut from uh, the uh, issues concerning commodities, lumber and oil and a number of other things. Uh, it has to do with uh, commuting patterns, people uh, no longer, so many people no longer living near where they work, and so places that hadn't had a housing crunch um, are feeling that crunch now. The housing crunch in America, as it were, loosely speaking, uh, had primarily been a big city problem uh, over the years. Um, and, and I can tell you, as someone who you know, is pretty active in the U.S. Conference of Mayors, it had been um, the, the point of discussion uh, among America's mayors, but primarily the major metros, where people were getting crowded out of uh, their, their neighborhoods, getting pushed out because rents were skyrocketing. And, uh, and then all the mobility issues associated with that. Uh, it's come to really every corner of America now, except really the most rural parts. Um, and it's certainly come here in, to, to New Bedford. New Bedford over the last few years, and certainly as we've emerged from the pandemic, has experienced uh, price shock. Uh, rents have gone up uh, considerably. Home values uh, have gone uh, up considerably uh, as well. And although there's been, uh, in the last several months, a leveling off of both, it is far we're at price points now, both in the rental market and the uh, home ownership market that are far above what they were uh, even three years ago. Um, this has meant uh, that in many corners of our city, folks have really struggled to secure the housing that they and their families need. And we, we hear the stories uh, all the time. We see the families uh, come here for assistance and uh, into community services, into other city agencies uh, looking for, uh, for some direction. And uh, city, our city agencies have been working very hard to uh, address uh, the problem, uh, but the pri primary problem we have here in New Bedford is a market one, and it is not, and it is a problem that is not exactly intuitive. Uh, the problem we have here is a very different one from what the large, the large metros uh, experience, and and it's really a matter of the, the return on investment that developers are. Uh, likely to make on any housing investment in, in New Bedford, right? It's the private sector that builds housing. It's not, not the public sector. And if, there, if you're in the private sector, you build housing like you would do anything else in the private sector for a profit. The problem in New Bedford is that the construction of new housing and even the rehabilitation of existing housing is not all that profitable. And we exist in a New England-wide construction market, right? It is that, that is the problem thing I underscore the most that confirms that build housing, that build stuff uh, here. We're also building it in the Boston area. They're building it in north of Boston. They're building it in Connecticut and Rhode Island and so forth. And the cost of construction is relatively uniform across New England because it's a, a single market. But if you're a developer, you go where you get, uh, like any other business, you go where things are most profitable. And the reality is that the rents in New Bedford are dramatically lower than they are uh, in relation to the, most of the rest of New England and certainly Greater Boston, about half of what they are in Greater Boston. So you have for a developer, and we've, we've had developers here with us, you have uh, costs that are to, to build something that are 
about what the, they are in Greater Boston, not that much more. The, the plan uh, that we're announcing details it, um, but the gap in rents are like this. And so um, we address, uh, we have been addressing that gap through subsidy, and we'll talk about um, that in a second. But that is, that is, I want just to underscore that. It's, this is, it, this, although this is a national problem, there are peculiarities to our market that we have to address here. So what we are doing through, we've had a number of hearings uh, about housing in the last few months, uh, uh, headed up by our new housing director, Josh Amaral, very ably. We've had discussions with developers. We've had, uh, we certainly hear it from folks uh, on a daily basis about where they are. We hear it from the homeless service providers network. And what we've tried to do is put together a comprehensive plan that, again, attempts to be a fulsome approach to uh, to this issue, and um, and our job now is to execute on it. So I'm, I'm pleased that this is it. You guys have copies of it, but this is this is the plan uh, that we are announcing today. Is it is a uh, a plan that has 22 uh, measures to address housing at all levels. Right. We also want to promote home ownership. We want to make sure that people don't feel like they have to leave New Bedford to uh, to find a home. Uh, to own and to live in as well. So that's part of part of this as well. And then, and as I'll talk about in a second, this has to be a regional approach. The housing market in Greater New Bedford doesn't sort of neatly fit within the four corners of the municipal borders of the city of New Bedford. It's a region-wide problem, and it has to be dealt with on a regional basis. So what are the measures that we are tailoring to, to Greater New Bedford? There are many, as I said, but the first has to do with increasing the housing supply, doing everything we can to reduce barriers to development and to ensure that development can be uh, more profitable here. So I'm just going to tick through all these. I don't, I don't want to uh, recapitulate everything that is in uh, the, um, uh, and the plan itself, but I do, uh, I do want to go through it, um, uh, some of the highlights. So it, we are proceeding now, so it's not like this is like uh, the start of something completely new, right? We've, what we've tried to do is, is package up a lot of what we have been doing, upscale it, and then to do some more stuff. But what we have been doing right now, we have under construction some 149 new units of housing. About three quarters of those uh, units are income restricted. Um, you know, I, I just want to uh, note the presence of uh, my good friend Jerry Cavanaugh, who's doing a fabulous uh, rehab over at the former Holy Family School. That's one of the five projects that uh, will yield those 149 uh, units. Uh, we're going to fast track permitting for multifamily housing. Uh, there's a way to, to do that, we think, that is faster than what we have today, so that again, we're reducing barriers. Uh, we will, uh, we're, we're going to be focusing, uh, committing recruitment of new housing developers to uh, HED housing and uh, HCD, housing and uh, community development. Uh, that's so that we are more focused on uh, in our approach to, uh, to recruitment. We're expanding the HDIP zone in the city. This council has already approved that. So this is already underway. That's what's with the state now for final approval. HDIP is a subsidy that uh, the state has that, is, that does not come with an income restriction. And that is the subsidy that is most popular in Massachusetts outside of Greater Boston. That's what the mayors outside of Greater Boston want for their cities. And I count myself among them. I, I do want to Thank uh, Representative Tony Cabral in particular for his effort to advance uh, HDIP in the state legislature. It has been underfunded for many years. Uh, Governor Healy has proposed a huge increase in funding, and uh, uh, Tony has been a real champion uh, on that front. Um, we will, um, and we're also going to push hard for more uh, funding from the Community Preservation Act. We think there's an opportunity there to uh, further support uh, housing development uh, through that uh, mechanism. So that's a, a big part of this. Uh, the way to get at, the way ultimately to make housing cheaper is to increase uh, more affordable, more attainable is to increase the housing supply and that's what we're going to do. Uh, in part, one of the ways we can do that without spending a whole lot of money is to ensure that all the vacant properties that can be put back on the market readily are in fact uh, put back on the market and where we have a number of vacancies in the city There's always a number of vacancies in any given city with turnover with people uh, widows living in 
uh, single family housing and, 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 uh, and then passing away and then the, the housing being left at, uh, staying in some uh, uh, frozen essentially in, in probate court that happens a lot same thing with land court and, and so we're going to try to free that up as well uh, we're also going to be promoting first time um, uh, home uh, ownership as well we're going to be putting more funding into our first time home ownership uh, program as well as our uh, accelerated repair program. These are both programs that we've had for a long time and we have an opportunity now through uh, with ARPA funds to uh, accelerate and expand those those programs which are very popular. Uh, a couple of other things we want to do, we've got a, we've got a, a couple of zoning impediments as well. Uh, there's a minimum lot size for redevelopment especially in, uh, that, that applies in our tenement neighborhoods that restricts the kind of housing that can go there in effect it requires uh, it requires a lot size that's larger than what, what's really available for new development. We're going to remove that. We're going to adjust parking requirements uh, as well. Uh, we're also going to be uh, removing barriers to accessory dwelling units. I, I think there's been a lot of talk of, uh, about that. I don't think it's going it, to, it's not going to change the market entirely, but I think on the margin it could be uh, helpful and we want to uh, support that as well. Um, and then, and then we're going to look at, again, we're going to be promoting the transit-oriented development districts around uh, the rail stations that will be uh, opened up soon. We also know that, just, that, that all this stuff is not going to happen overnight. We've got to, we have to make sure that we're taking care of the people who are falling through the cracks in the market. And we committed some $600,000 in CARES Act funding. Uh, for to expand our rental assistance program. We're going to continue to do that with ARPA funds on an as-needed uh, basis. And, uh, uh, and that's going to be uh, a big thing um, for us in the, in the coming months. The, uh, and then we're going to be, we, we have a very strong homeless uh, service providers uh, network. Carl Alves is the, the new chair right here and just does a fabulous job in working and pulling people together to focus on homelessness and substance abuse. Um, and we're going to continue to, uh, to upgrade what is already a, a very high functioning program. There are ways we can improve and we're going to be doing that through a planning process, but we're going to continue to do the things that, uh, that work well. Um, and then we're going to continue to, to, to do, um, uh, to, to look at, um, uh, at upgrading and building the capacity of nonprofits who um, we, we do a lot of what we do is through the nonprofit sector. It's not done directly by city government. And so we want to make sure that uh, our nonprofits have the capacity to do that. I didn't tick off every one of those measures, but I wanted to uh, go through a, a lot of it just so you get a sense of the, just how comprehensive uh, the plan is. And I, I will just say this also, it's not an overnight exercise. Uh, because uh, and because we are uh, a city, a metro area of about 250,000, a city of a little over 100,000, we're not going to solve uh, everything uh, that concerning the housing market that is beyond our reach. But we're going to be doing. I want people to know that we're going to be doing everything uh, that we think is effective to address the problem here, it's proven to be effective, and do it in a concerted way. We also want to set an example for our suburbs. Um, there is in New Bedford, um, in Greater New Bedford, a disproportionate concentration of rental units, right? So we, we comprise less than 50% of the population in, in Greater New Bedford, the city does, but we have, uh, we have uh, the, the lion's share, uh, we estimate close to 90% of the rental units in the region. Uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have pretty much, we have, I think it's in here, 78% uh, of, of the, the individuals who are defined, uh, uh, according to the federal government, as being under the poverty line in the region. That's, it, that's an issue. None of the towns comply with Chapter 40B, uh, none of them in Greater New Bedford. Uh, so we do need a commitment from the towns, and, we, we, uh, and again, this is a, an awkward conversation with them. Uh, this, I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat it, but uh, we can't, I, New Bedford can't operate in isolation on this front. We need everybody pulling. The towns do need to step up. And we want to work constructively with them toward that end, uh, but they have a role in this. And, uh, and, and so what I'd say to you, when New Bedford is going to do its part, and I hope that's 
reflected, uh, people understand that in this plan that New Bedford is going to do all those things that have been proven to be effective, but we just can't do it alone. We need, we need the towns uh, on board and we'll be, have, we'll be spearleading, uh, spearheading uh, that conversation. So um, take a look at the plan. We're gonna be talking about this in the, in the, uh, the time ahead. And I, I really want to, um, I wanna thank a, a number of people for putting this together. Most of all, uh, Josh Amaral, our Director of Housing and Community Development. Uh, who did uh, the lion's share of the work on this and did it very skillfully and it's very clearly written um, and done with a, a whole lot of really good input. Uh, I want to thank Elise Raposa, who also played a big part in the formulation of the policy. I want to thank uh, the Regen Committee, Regeneration Committee, headed up by Tony, Tony Sapienza, who you'll hear from in a second. Uh, again, the, the HSPN, uh, headed up by uh, Carl Alves, and you'll also hear from Pam Keechler, uh, the executive director of PACE uh, in a moment and all their work, all ongoing work uh, in this area has been huge. And I think they're, they're, it's their, their thoughts that have shaped this to a great degree. Um, and I wanna thank uh, the city councilors who've been talking about uh, these issues and you'll, you'll have an opportunity to hear from a couple of those uh, councilors in a, in a moment. Um, but I wanted to call uh, Josh Hammer all up to, to talk a little bit um, about some of the detail of, of the proposals and to, to offer his perspective as well. Josh. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you all today. I'm entering into my fourth month in this role leading the city's Office of Housing and Community Development. And uh, prior to that, I was a pretty frequent commenter, uh, commentator on, on housing issues here in our city uh, in my work in the nonprofit sector. Uh, in that time, I had expressed uh, that the city should uh, be rearticulating its views on housing and, and, and putting out details to support its plans. And so I'm thankful to Mayor Mitchell for seeing it the same way and allowing me to be part of this project and announcing policies that sort of wrap our, our arms around this issue and, and uh, bring to bear all of, all of New Bedford's resources to tackle uh, something that's, that's very important and, and critical to so many residents. Uh, as he mentioned, housing is a complex issue uh, across the country, the state, and certainly here at home. Uh, with dire impacts on, on all too many of our, of our residents. Um, it's clear that the way to make the biggest impact is to treat it as a supply and demand problem. We've been saying that right along. Uh, and we have to prioritize adding more housing units. To that end, I'm excited that this plan puts the Office of Housing Community Development, our talented team, uh, in the driver's seat in reducing red tape, fast-tracking large-scale housing development projects, recruiting developers, and uh, operationalizing all of our resources to eliminate vacant properties and put them back to productive use on the, on the housing market. This is the way to assist our residents with housing affordability, and we have to throw the kitchen sink at it, every approach that we can. So to the extent uh, the mayor mentioned the comp comprehensiveness of the plan, I do encourage you to, to look through and, and study the details of it. We're doing a lot of different things, and, and we can't do that uh, in isolation. We can't do that alone. Uh, I do want to make sure this message gets out. Um, this is a bit of a sea change, and so if you're a developer with the capacity to build the types of projects that we need here in New Bedford, understand that. We need you. We are open for business. Give me a call anytime. Let's figure out how to make this work and how to tackle this problem for our, for our residents. Uh, we know that adding those units will take some time. It's going to be a process. Uh, even if we focus on the vacant and abandoned or uh, underutilized properties that are a little bit quicker to get uh, onto the market in the, in the short term, uh, a highlight of the plan for me is that we propose a, a range of uh, expanded supports to help people with housing instability in the short term, whether that's rental assistance, uh, whether that's emergency financial assistance, emergency repair programs, first-time home buyer programs, and similar. Um, we embrace collaboration with our, with our partners in nonprofit agencies, the Homeless Service Providers Network, uh, the Economic Development Community, and uh, everyone working on making housing attainable for New Bedford residents. We, we can tackle this problem. We will tackle this problem. We've been doing a lot of things, but I think marshalling them together and, um, and putting them together in this way with a renewed focus and uh, the energy of, of our department and our partners across city go government and otherwise is, is an exciting day. So uh, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Josh. Um, so I want to thank the support of the city council today. We've got, uh, we've got some really good input from councilors on, on the plan as well. And I uh, want to acknowledge the presence of uh, Councilor Scott Lima uh, from Ward 5. Who are you playing the back there? Naomi Carney at large, councilor in our large, uh, or excuse me, Ward 3 councilor, Sean Oliver. And I just uh, want to ask uh, Scott Lima if you want to come up and uh, say a few words on behalf of uh, the council. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. So, so this is a um, 
it's a good start, but as you say, Mayor, it's not, it's not you know, a brand new start. I mean, there are some, some, of these, uh, some of these initiatives that have been going on for some time. But the fact of the matter is, is that this really needs to be fast-tracked. You know, this just can't be a document um, that, you know, we've gotten done and, and we don't take action on. We do get complaints um, from developers uh, that the process is slow, things are slowing in the building department, but hopefully this, this, this plan uh, will help us go beyond those barriers really, really, really knock down barriers. We have to do it. It's just we, we, we have to do it. You know, we, hear, we hear comparisons to the municipalities that are close by uh, that seem to be moving forward. And um, land is, um, you know, it's not, it's not abundant. Um, so that's always, that's always an issue. But um, we have to take this plan, we have to move forward, and we have to make it happen. Otherwise, the situation is just going to get worse. I thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Josh and all the individuals uh, and departments that have been involved in this. So it's a great start, but uh, we have to make it happen. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. All right, next I, I want to call up uh, Tony Sapienza, the uh, former CEO of Joseph Abood Manufacturing and the chair of the, uh, both the Economic Development Council uh, and the New Bedford Regeneration Committee. Tony's been a leader on promoting uh, housing development uh, in the city. It's been a, a big uh, part of what the Regeneration Committee does, and uh, uh, I want to thank him for his leadership and ask him to come on up and say a few words. Tony. Thank you, thank you Mayor. It's good to be here today. Um, the Economic Development Council has been intimately working on housing issues for as long as I've been the president of the board. Derek Santos has been a true leader, and he has partnered with previous housing directors, and I know is going to partner very closely with Josh Amaral to make sure that we can bring these projects to, to fruition. We get lots of calls. We have a partner in Josh and in the mayor, certainly, in, in building more uh, housing in this city. Housing is first. Jobs are important as well, and that's why the Economic Development Council, you know, tends to focus on the jo jobs part, but, uh, but we also understand that you can't have good jobs if you don't have good housing. Housing is, is, a, is a first. You need to be able to live here and to support your family. So we are really excited about this plan. Uh, we think it touches all of the bases. And to quote the counselor, yeah, now we've got to get it done. We've got to do the things that are in this plan, make these things happen. And I can assure you that members of the Regeneration Committee and certainly the Economic Development uh, uh, staff that works for, with Derek Santos are going to work as hard as possible to make these things happen and certainly work with Josh and the mayor as well. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you, Tony. All right, next, uh, thank you, Tony. Yeah. Uh, next, I'd like to call uh, Pam Keechler, uh, the executive director of PACE, that, uh, an organization that uh, provides for those in need in the city uh, in a number of ways, uh, but most especially in assisting uh, folks uh, in need of, of housing to talk a little bit about uh, the plan and uh, how um, she sees it being implemented and, and the benefits and the challenges uh, alike. Pam. Thank you, Mayor Mitchell. Um, Pace is um, really excited about the elements that are um, laid out in this plan. Uh, we are really committed to working really closely with all of our partners to address the tremendous challenges around housing. Uh, we see firsthand on a daily basis the extreme need for housing that's realistically priced for people living in poverty, as well as others who are seeking even moderately priced units at our Housing Opportunity Center. As the city rolls the plan out, we look forward to their efforts to help increase housing availability in a variety of ways, including the housing stock. We commend the idea that we need to address what's happening in the immediate in trying to increase the uh, rental assistance piece, but then also looking um, forward as we do, as many of the previous speakers have talked about, the slow work of really developing additional units. Over the years, PACE has worked closely with the city to both bring vacant properties back into use and then offered to first-time home buyers through our Youth Build program, and at, as well as um, looking at units and trying to bring additional units into our housing stock to offer um, at moderately priced um, housing. 
Um, this, through this plan, um, I think that really the city's done a nice job of taking a look at how we can engage as many people as possible because to do that, it takes way more than one or two groups. It, it does take the whole, the whole network to really be working together to try to address and work closely with um, taking a look at how we can help with um, bringing vacant properties back into use how we can increase the numbers of units that we have and have them available to people who are um, in need and are ready to take on that uh, the um, successful uh, housing. And also um, to really just, um, you know, use this plan as a roadmap. Um, I think it's laid out nicely so that we all can take a look through the HSPN, as, um, as has been alluded to, to come together and creatively and innovatively move forward so that we can bring the housing stock up. So we're really excited about the possibilities of, ahead of us. Um, we're excited to announce that we're about to close on a property tomorrow um, with the, in partnership with the Office of Housing and Community Development, um, bringing six additional units on. It's a, small piece of, it's a small piece of the pie, but it's one step in the direction. And we look forward to being able, after successfully completing this project, to move forward and take on additional projects like that, um, along with the other partners who are interested in, and excited about doing that as well. So thank you. Thank you, Pam. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Pam, so much. And, and thanks for breaking news today. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's really good. Uh, the last speaker is uh, Carl Aft, the executive director of, of PACA, who is um, relentless in his efforts uh, to uh, to care for those uh, in need, especially those who are uh, suffering um, from substance uh, disorders uh, and those who are in need of housing and so many others. And uh, I also want to just take uh, the opportunity. Uh, that you've heard it from me before, but I just, uh, since we've got people gathered here, just to thank you for uh, your most recent efforts, Carl, in uh, putting folks up when we had that just uh, that aberrantly cold day just a few weeks ago it seems like uh, a long time ago now but it's just uh, you guys really uh, you and some others have but stepped up but uh, but uh, you guys at PACA did that and I just I'm very grateful uh, for that effort but uh, I wanted to have Carl here today because he's been uh, not only uh, not only is the the new uh, director of the homeless service providers network but he is also um, been involved in all these issues for a long time, which, for which we are grateful. Carl. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And uh, before I kind of say something, last night it was a major fire. And housing is fragile. Um, probably 20 plus folks have been uh, displaced and um, unfortunately some, some loss of life uh, as a result of that fire. But the courageous uh, first responders uh, stepped up and uh, did a fine job of responding as well as uh, community, the uh, communities around to kind of respond to that. And the, the homeless service provider network and others will be meeting to help meet the needs of those folks that are displaced. So it really is about community coming together. Um, and I'm thrilled to have this plan. I think this is terrific. It's a, it's a, a roadmap for us to kind of take a look and are we are we hitting our marks and and perhaps we'll add some new marks to, to hit going forward but I'm very excited um, and it's really important for community neighborhoods uh, to understand what's in this plan to speak up local investors uh, like uh, Mr. Kavanaugh and others folks that have ties to our community we need that investment locally so I'm really excited about being part of trying to advance this plan, uh, and I look forward to great things coming forward. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so let me just th thank you, Carl, for that. Um, and you know, I think you're absolutely right. With the fire last night, it was, uh, as unfortunate as it was, uh, there was a remarkable response by our first responders, but also by a constellation of private individuals uh, ranging from the Red Cross to uh, Seven Hills to PACA to a number of others who got together and it's just and, and facilitated uh, the HP, HSPM facilitated the placement of people uh, who had been displaced by the fire like within hours and uh, it's that response uh, the response happens when people work together and it works really well. Uh, in New Bedford, unfortunately, we've had way too much practice at it, uh, but 
uh, but it, 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 is, uh, it is an extraordinary feat, and not every city uh, has the benefit of, of that kind of teamwork. So you're absolutely right, and I appreciate your, your mentioning it. So let me just, let me just say this. Um, we're, we're committed to doing this. Um, we, don't, we don't leave plans on the shelf. We, we will execute. We've got a plan. It will be executed. And, um, and again, I, I don't want to pretend that somehow you know, this will somehow inoculate uh, New Bedford from the wider market forces uh, that have to be addressed by Congress, by the state, and so forth. But um, but it is a, an effort, again, a fulsome effort to do those things that we know that have been proven to be effective uh, at the local level, and uh, we are committed to it. And again, I'll just say to all the developers out there, uh, and uh, Josh, and I appreciate your your, uh, your touching on this. We uh, we're open for business. We want to see you build here and. Uh, we look forward to uh, to the work ahead. And uh, with that, I will take questions. Will this be online soon? I wasn't expecting a question from <laughs> 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 that direction, Scott. Yes. I have to meet a developer. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It'll be uh, out there on the World Wide Web. Go ahead. I'm not sure if this is in the plan, but did the city discuss any sort of rent stabilization or rent control? Well, I think we made our position known uh, on that. But let me just say something about uh, about rent control. Look, it, it's I, it is, and we laid this out in the, the letter that I sent to the council last week. Um, I, I totally get why people are talking about that. It's not surprising, and um, and if given given the nature of uh, the market and where rents are going, you would fully expect people to be talking about limiting rents, rent limiting what the landlords uh, charge. It's just you can't look at the history of rent control in this country or rent stable there with some form of price controls and say that it's been successful, uh, especially in a market like this that is trying to reduce barriers to investment. This is not Boston. This isn't, I was just in Baltimore yesterday. It's not Baltimore. It's not Washington, it's not Austin, Texas, where there are developers lined up at, at the gate of the city just looking to come in and invest. We have to hustle for investment to pull it in. And, and that's the only way you can increase supply and then ultimately control prices. And, uh, and so in that way, we are, you know, we are subject to, to market forces. Um, and that's why we wanted to put on paper a plan that directly addresses those those market forces and, and facilitates uh, the increase in supply. Okay, go ahead. Were any of the ideas presented at the homelessness conference with Julia Orlando last month considered in the development of the homelessness part of this plan? Yeah, uh, Josh, you want to speak to that? Thank you, Grace. Um, the last section, which is really all about you know the efforts that we can take to address homelessness and housing instability. It does incorporate some of the ideas that we heard from, from Julie Orlando's presentation last month. Um, I, would, I would say that I think a lot of the takeaways of the homeless service provider community is that she didn't deliver a lot of things that we, we didn't already realize would be successful. So in a way, the power of her presentation was building momentum toward those solutions and getting people on the same page. And uh, our office is eager to facilitate those efforts among our nonprofits. Part of uh, empowering our nonprofits, building capacity among our nonprofits, and also uh, one of the items in the plan is uh, sort of launching a study to um, to really dive into all the aspects of our homeless services continuum, which is where Julie is, you know, that's her bread and butter. Um, we're going to analyze those. We have an RFP that went out uh, live Monday, and we're expecting responses from experts in the field to get back to us, and then we're going to launch that process collaboratively with our partners. So we're very excited about that, and um, it, to a large degree, that was uh, one of the sparks to that conversation. Anybody else from the media? All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Look forward to talking about it in the days and weeks and months ahead. Thanks, everyone.